20 years ago, the original red and blue versions of Pokemon were released on the Game Boy and they blew everybody's minds. The games were such a massive success that they not only popularized Pokemon as a franchise, but also popularized handheld gaming as a platform. And 20 years later, Pokemon has become one of the biggest franchises in the world, with hundreds of video games, TV shows, movies, trading cards, comic book, action figures, and so much other crap dumb people will buy. But why are the Pokemon games so popular? How do they have such mass appeal? Too dumb to figure this stuff out for yourself? Don't worry, that's why there's weirdos like me who will analyze a 20 year old game made for dumb kids. Now if you're expecting some sort of review where I try and judge whether or not the Pokemon games are really good, let me ruin the suspense for you right now. These are great games. I mean, everybody knows they're great games. I mean, I love the Pokemon games. They were one of the first games I ever played as a kid. I couldn't put them down. They were like candy. If candy was cocaine. What I'm going to try and do is explain why the Pokemon games are good and how they have such broad appeal. I'm not going to focus on flaws that the games have, and that might seem unfair or biased to you, but I'm more interested in finding out what makes these games great rather than nitpick over a few gripes that ultimately don't take too much away from the experience. Also, I'm not saying that Pokemon is bad now or trying to debate which game is the best, because I think all Pokemon games are pretty much the same, and what I say here can be applied to most any game in the series. I'm just mainly going to talk about the original versions because they're the ones that I played the most and the ones that I probably have the most footage of. So let's get into what makes Pokemon good. Part 1. Choice. One of the biggest reasons people love Pokemon makes itself apparent within the first five minutes of the game. The amount of choice it gives you. You get to choose your name, your gender, your starting Pokemon, and its name. And while most games might stop there, it's just the tip of the iceberg in what Pokemon has to offer in terms of choice. You get to choose what Pokemon you catch, what moves you teach them, what balls you use to catch them, what you evolve your Eevee into, what you want your to be, which Hitmon Lee or Hitmon Chan. You even get to choose which version of the game you want. Now what sets Pokemon apart from any other RPG is that it gives the player complete control over the makeup of their team. Most RPGs let you switch out your active party members from a pool of about 6 to 8 characters, but the original Pokemon let you choose from a pool of 150, and that number has since grown to over 700, and it even allows you to have duplicates of the same Pokemon on your team, meaning the amount of combinations you can make in a team is verging on infinite. And you might be saying to yourself, well what's the big deal? How do these choices make Pokemon great? I mean, don't lots of games have choices? How does this set Pokemon apart from any other game with choices? And you'd be kinda right, just cause Pokemon has a lot of choices doesn't instantly make it good. But what makes Pokemon good is not that it has an abundance of choices, but how those choices affect the game. Pokemon uses choice to let the player express themselves as an individual through playing the game. I mean, think about how you play Pokemon. It's probably different from how your friends or anybody else you know plays it. You catch different Pokemon, teach them different moves. One person playing Pokemon can have a totally different experience than somebody else playing Pokemon. The choices in Pokemon are great because they let the player make an individual experience that is unique to them. And they let you find what you love about the games. You probably have a favorite Pokemon or favorite move, favorite character, or even a favorite game and you have your own reasons for liking them. The choices in Pokemon allow for so much variation in how the game can be played that the experience of playing Pokemon is so much more personal, intimate, and impactful than playing most other games. Now I'm not saying Pokemon is the only games where choices have this effect, I'm saying Pokemon is the game that probably takes this idea the furthest. And I kind of feel like using choice in this way is kind of becoming like a lost art in modern games. My biggest gripe with the choices given to the player in modern games is that there's been a shift to make the choices impact the story instead of impact the gameplay. Now you might have your own problems with this shift, like how this can turn games into nothing more than animated choose your own adventure books, or how these games might use techniques that just create the illusion of choice, or how sometimes they can't even deliver on their promises or expectations. But I want to focus on how these choices don't deliver the same impact that the choices in Pokemon do. You see, a lot of times story-based choices will put more emphasis on the outcomes of the choices rather than making the choices themselves, usually through things like multiple endings or branching storylines. But oftentimes, you'll just get to those branching storylines in the exact same way. They try to put the importance on the destination rather than the journey, and that's why story-based choices often don't work as well as the gameplay choices in Pokemon do. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. The goal in all Pokemon games is pretty much the same. Become the champion, but it's how you get to that goal that's important. Remember that huge pool of Pokemon I mentioned before? Well, every single person you face in the game has that same pool to choose from. Every trainer, 
gym leader, mafia member, champion, and even other people playing the game has the same pool to choose from that you do. And you can beat the game with any team you can make, so your choices don't determine if you beat the game, they determine how you beat the game. And what separates you from everybody else in the game is what choices you make along the way. So, in the end, you make your choices, but your choices also make you. Now I'm not saying that story-based choices are by nature horrible, or can't be done well, or can't even be in a game with gameplay choices. I'm saying that the people making the game severely limit what they're able to do with the game when they think the only way they can give the player choice is to let them change the story. So after you choose all your shit, you try and walk out the door, but whoa, this little shit stops you and wants a fight. And now we get into the next part of what makes Pokemon good. Part 2. Combat. Now combat is probably the most important part of an RPG since it's what you'll be doing the most. And there are a lot of ways you can do combat, and no real right way to do it, but I feel there's a lot of problems that most combat systems, especially turn-based systems, might get into that might turn most people off, and I think Pokemon does a good job of avoiding a lot of them. First, I want to explain how Pokemon's combat system is classified, so you know where it stands and what games you can compare it to. You probably already know that Pokemon has turn-based combat, but it goes beyond just that. Pokemon has what I call a passive combat system where instead of actions being performed as soon as they're ordered, like in the active combat systems that you'd find in most games in the Final Fantasy series, both parties select their actions beforehand and then the entire turn is played out. This is what you'd find in games like Dragon Quest. A passive system by its nature is slower and more methodical, requiring the player to predict their opponent's actions rather than just react to them. You'd think this would turn most people off to the game and that the game wouldn't be marketed to kids who usually have a shorter attention span. But here's where the key difference in Pokemon's battle system comes into play. Instead of both parties fighting all at once, fights in Pokemon's are only between one member of each team at a time. This one change has a massive effect on the whole system. Now, combat moves at a much faster pace, since only fighting one guy is quicker than fighting an entire team of them, so random encounters aren't as much of a chore as they can be in other games. This also makes combat much more dynamic. Boss battles aren't just you hitting a big guy for 10 minutes. Now you're taking their team apart piece by piece and having to change your strategy as they shift through their team. And this actually makes combat much more intense. Having only one action per turn and in the late game most fights being decided in one or two turns gives combat greater chance for bigger upsets and makes you feel like each move could determine the outcome of the battle. This led to other changes in the system as well. Since there's no room for team play anymore, there's no need for the classic RPG roles like tank, healer, and DPS, so there needs to be another reason to send out one Pokemon instead of another. This led to the elemental type system. So now, a Pokemon's use in any situation is determined by their elemental advantages instead of their role in combat. And since both players could theoretically have the same Pokemon in a fight, there had to be a way to create differences between the individuals of the same species. This led to the 4 move limit. So now, two of the same Pokemon can perform differently in combat based on the moves they know. This also later led to things like Eevees and Ivies. Pokemon has a very effective combat system, one that can be enjoyed by beginners and pros alike. I don't think it's intentional, but there are a lot of similarities between Pokemon and chess. There are six different pieces, both players have the same pieces to choose from, each player only has one move per turn, and the winning strategy is usually to predict your opponent's moves in advance. So after you beat up a 10 year old's pet, you walk out the door and take your first steps in the world of Pokemon, and eventually, you'll run into the next thing that makes Pokemon good. Part 3. Encounters most modern RPGs seem to think people hate turn-based combat like it's the plague. But it's not turn-based combat that people hate, no. The thing that most people hate in RPGs is random encounters. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say random encounter, it's one in a game, usually an RPG, you're walking around, and then boom, without any trigger other than an unseen dice roll, you're thrown into a fight. Random encounters were created so that smaller teams could create larger games by basically procedurally generating the encounters so that they could save the time, money, and manpower that they would spend placing the individual encounters. So why are random encounters bad? Well, because when your system is slower paced by design, stopping every 5 seconds to waste 2 minutes on a pointless fight can murder the pacing of the game, and this lack of progress could frustrate the player enough that they'll just outright stop playing the game. And it's just lazy to put it in a game today. 
Unless your game has serious budgeting, staffing, or time constraint issues, having random encounters is basically admitting you didn't care enough to put the work into the game. Now you might think because of all my criticism that I think random encounters hurt Pokemon as a game, but Pokemon actually needs random encounters. The catching mechanic wouldn't work without any random encounters, and since you can level up an infinite amount of levels, you need an infinite source of XP. Pokemon wouldn't work as a game if it didn't have random encounters, and I also feel like Pokemon does its best to mitigate problems that random encounters might create. What makes the random encounters in Pokemon bearable is that they only occur in defined spaces, in tall grass, caves, or other dungeons, so the player has some ability to avoid random encounters if they want to. You might argue that this makes going through places like caves a nightmare, but I actually kind of like it because it adds a level of danger and challenge to the area. Too often games are told some place is super dangerous only to go there and have it be the exact same as everywhere else. And if random encounters are still too much for you, then at least the game gives the player plenty of repellent. And not all the encounters in Pokemon are random. A lot of them are pre-existing encounters, through the form of other trainers, that you trigger by either walking in front of them or talking to them. These are great for a lot of reasons. They control the pacing of the game well, they give the player a minimum amount of XP so that the game can be better balanced, and unlike a lot of RPGs, once you beat these encounters, that's it, they're beat. They don't respawn. This makes backtracking way less annoying than it can be in other games. And Pokemon also doesn't do something that I hate in RPGs, which is throwing a boss at you with no warning. All the bosses in Pokemon don't fight you unless you walk up and talk to them, except for one character, but I'll talk about him later. But easily the best thing about these encounters is that they're not random encounters. Somebody actually cared enough to take the time to place them, and it's a sad indictment that I have to tell you that actually caring about your game is something that's good to do. Part 4. Story RPGs are usually known for having more extensive stories, at least compared to those of other genres. For a lot of RPGs, the story plays a large part in why people play them. Usually if the gameplay isn't too great, the game will still have an interesting story that'll keep you playing just to see what happens next. But this is where Pokemon, again, is an oddity, because Pokemon doesn't have that much of a story, or at least that much as other RPGs might have. There's no overarching themes or motifs, the universe isn't expanded upon or explained that much, your player character is a silent, unnamed person with no definable features or backstory or character development at all. The events of Pokemon could be explained in a few sentences. You're a kid, you catch some Pokemon, you go on an adventure, you beat up eight gym leaders, a terrorist organization, the Elite Four, the champion, and that's it, the end. But this isn't a criticism, I actually think this is a really good thing for Pokemon to do, since too much story can turn most people away. I mean, most people don't want to sit through 50 hours of a game showing them a slideshow of where they went last summer. Keeping the story to a minimum keeps the pacing up and draws in people who would usually be dissuaded from playing RPGs. The blank canvas of a story serves another, probably more important purpose, to let the player create their own stories. You see this guy here? This isn't Red or Ash or Butlord or whatever you named him. This is you, Kenny, Jimmy, Butlord, or whatever your name is. Pokemon is one of the games where naming your character has the most significance. Usually games use this as a cheap trick to try and get you invested in the game, but Pokemon actually wants to make it your story. This goes back to my point of Pokemon being a much more personal experience. By having a silent protagonist with almost no character traits, it almost forces the player to put themselves into the game and view the player character as themselves rather than someone they're just controlling. This makes the role-playing aspects of the game almost automatic, and even people who usually don't like RPGs can't help but enjoy it and feel some kind of connection. One of the best ways to get the player involved in the story it's through one of the most important characters in the Pokemon formula, the rival character. The rival character is someone who starts at the same place, with the same ability as you, and has the same goal. They appear sporadically throughout your adventure and challenge you to battles, getting stronger and stronger as the game progresses. What makes the rival character noteworthy in my opinion is that they're one of the best ways a game has ever motivated the player. In the original versions, the rival character was such a little turd that the thought of losing to him was enough to make your blood boil. It made you want to keep playing and get better at the game so you could beat him every time you meet. And outside of his obnoxious attitude, the game gives you plenty of reasons to hate him. He intentionally picks the starter that yours is weak to, so that every time you face off, you'll be at a disadvantage. He's the only character that will appear and challenge you without any warning, making him that much more annoying, but also making him a serious threat since he could appear at any time. And every time you get to a gym, he'll have beaten it first, giving you the feeling that even though you've beaten him every time, he's still getting better and you have to keep up. He's even champion before you are. But probably the most impactful part of the rival character is that you get to name him. You might think this is just a minor detail, but it's pretty major. Not many games let you name your opponent. You can name him whatever you want, and you've 
probably named him after somebody in real life that you have animosity towards, or just obscenities. And that's why I think the rival character does such a good job in involving the player in the story, because he's not the player character's rival, he's your rival. So with all that said, I've pretty much talked about all the things that I think make Pokemon as a game great, but I haven't answered my own question of why these games are so popular. In a perfect world, I could just say they're popular because they're good, but sadly that's not how it is. Now there are a lot of reasons why Pokemon as a franchise is so popular, but why I think the Pokemon games are popular is... Part 5. Simplicity. I've touched on this in other parts, but I feel like it's worth taking separate note of this. I think a large part of Pokemon's popularity comes from how easy it is to understand and play the games. This shouldn't come to a surprise to anybody. Since these games are marketed to kids, they can't really require anything more than the reasoning power of a third grader. The controls are very simple, in fact it uses almost the least amount of buttons you could use since most of the game is just navigating menus. The RPG mechanics are pretty simple too. There's no equipment screen, or points to invest in characters. You just sort of level up your characters and they learn new moves every once in a while. And the main strategy of the game is just a glorified version of rock, paper, scissors. But I'm not saying that Pokemon is by any means dumbed down. Pokemon does have some very deep systems, and the ability to have some very high level play. For proof, just look at things like the massive competitive community, and the insane amount of math people will put into things like EVs and IVs. Probably better for me to say that Pokemon presents itself as a very simple game, when in reality there's a lot more depth to it, or maybe it's just a good example of how you make an RPG for beginners. I mean, it was the first RPG I ever played. But how does Pokemon being simple make it successful? Well, this might sound cynical, but most people aren't too bright, and they don't like to be challenged or to feel stupid. This is why RPGs are such a niche genre, because they can be extremely complicated and hard to play, so it's rare for an RPG to be massively popular, unless your name rhymes with Spinal Spantasy. And that's how being simple helps Pokemon as a game. Being so easy to play and understand means that anyone can enjoy it. And Pokemon has one of the widest player bases of any series, and it's a pretty big deal that an RPG series was able to gain such popularity, and that popularity is pretty well deserved. So that's what I think makes Pokemon good. It's a great game series, and if you haven't played one, well, then you should go out and find a copy of a game and slap it into your nearest handheld gaming device and have yourself a grand old time. And hey, looks like they're going to release two new games. That could be fun, I guess. I don't know. And hey, thanks for sitting through this entire video of me rambling and raving about crazy stuff nobody cares about. If you have any responses to anything I've said in this video, or think that I should go die in a grease fire, well then, Tell me that please, I'm always open to comments or criticism. I really don't care about things like likes or subscribers, but I really do appreciate feedback, and I hope you've enjoyed yourself and learned something, or at least gained some new perspective. And I hope to make more of these videos, and I hope to see you guys real soon.